confess doesn't mean to come up here and say, oh Lord, I did this and oh Lord, I did that. Oh, God said, look, no, I already know what you did. I just want you to come and say, you caught me. <laughs> God says, the, trick, the, the problem with y'all is, y'all claim to be in my kingdom, but y'all in religion. You need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Matter of fact, the power of satanic control is not really in the spirit world it's in the mind read your bible again jesus said this burden you are carrying come under me let me take this burden of you it's religion that you carry and trying to make things happen hi guys welcome back to my channel you subscribers you're highly welcome today join me as we listen to my smoron in this thought-provoking exploration as he challenged the burdens of religion shedding light on the burdens of religion he emphasized the power of mindset and confession. Explore how stepping out of religious confines and embrace God's kingdom unlocks the promises often obscured by mental strongholds. Enjoy the rest of the video and share your thoughts at the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. God bless you. I see some of y'all hurting just like me. I, I mean, the more the Lord shows me this, the more I feel so stupid. Do you know what it is to spend all your life preaching stuff that ain't real? Now don't laugh at me because look how long you've been listening to the stuff that ain't real. And saying, Amen. Give somebody a high five. Tell them, thank God for deliverance. Thank God for deliverance. Praise God. Listen. By the time you get this revelation, you're going to be like me. I ain't never had it so good all my life. Jesus said, this burden you are carrying, come under me. Let me take this burden of you. This religion that you're carrying, trying to make things happen. That's a burden. Religion gives you things to do. The kingdom gives you opportunity to be. See, a religion is something that you perform. But a citizen is something you are. What do you do to be a Bahamian? No, 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 no. No, you, you miss. Yeah, I like your answer. That's true. You're just born. Or you get rights constitutionally right but what do you do after you are a Bahamian to be a Bahamian what is a thing that makes you Bahamian I don't know what do you do do you eat to be a Bahamian no everybody eats do you wear certain kind of clothes no everybody got to cover themselves what makes you a citizen I mean what is an American now that's a confusing question See, and that itself proves to you how the kingdom works. What is an American? Well, some of them speak Spanish, some of them speak Portugal, I mean uh, Portuguese, some of them speak Polish, some of them speak, you know, but they're all Americans. Some got slant eyes, some got, you know, big eyes, some got no eyes. I mean, just, some got sharp nose, flat nose, big nose. I mean, what, is an, what is an American? It's not something that you do. Religion is what you, things you do. You go to mass, you go to church, you light candles, you do this, you give incense, and the charismatic thing, they come and they jump around, and you gotta skip, huh? praise the Lord, and you gotta clap, and you gotta sing certain choruses, and you gotta, so you gotta over it, and the Baptist, you gotta get your hymn books, and you gotta have that organ, and you gotta see, and God said, what are you all doing? What are you doing? Hey boys, the heavyweight, you know, every Sunday, you know why you're tired after the service? <laughs> you know just why you're tired? But not you, but that mother fellas. Yeah, that mother fellas. Give me five. Yeah, that mother fella. He got set free, praise God. I mean, pastors are tired? Why? It's a performance for two hours. Put on them big, heavy robes. And I mean, it already hot. That's a weight, man. 
And then you gotta follow these certain things. I mean, and you hate them, but you gotta do them. Why? This is what we do. And while you're doing it, your girlfriend's sitting in the crowd and your wife over here. So don't talk to me about holiness. You're performing duties, you're performing rituals. You, you ain't no citizen. This ain't something you do. Jesus said to the far, let's see. See, they were far, you see, so he called them far, you see. And the other ones were sad, you see, so he called them sad, you see. And on two of them, he said to them, they asked him, where's the kingdom of God? He said, the kingdom of God, not what you do. It's in you. You know, let me tell you where Bahamian is. It is in your mind. American is in your mind. That's, what, that's where it is. They told you, you are an American. Why? You followed their requirements. When you fulfilled their requirements, they said you are an American. And then they made you hold your hand up and you came to the altar of America and you confessed. Write the word confess down, please. The word confess doesn't mean to bring up your past. This blew my mind years ago when I found this out. The word confess means to agree. To agree with someone. How's that for a shock? So when the Bible says confess your sin, what it means is if God ever tells you something is sin, don't argue. Just what? Agree. Then God will forgive you. Right. See, as long as you don't agree, God says, I can't forgive you because you don't believe it's sin. Right. Confess doesn't mean to come up here and say, oh Lord, I did this and oh Lord, I did that. Oh, God says, look, no, I already know what you did. I just want you to come and say, you caught me. <laughs> Say amen. That's why God loved David so much. David ain't never tried to hide it. <laughs> Matter of fact, David wrote it for everybody to see. Psalm 51. David says, Oh Lord, I was born in iniquity, shaped in iniquity. In sin was I could see. God said, You're right about that. He says, And my sin is not hid from your face. Purge me with his soul. I will be clean. Wash me. I, because I like this guy. What do we do? We try to pretend that God don't know we're wrong. That's why our sins are still with us. So when you become an American citizen, what do you do? They take you through the requirements. You fulfill the requirements. Then they call a meeting with you, don't they? That's the altar call. And then someone from the State Department walks into that room, and there you are, and it doesn't matter what color skin you are, or what language you speak, or nothing. Once you fulfill the requirements, you're in that room, you white, black, yellow, trim, Indian, Chinese, Asian, whatever, you stand there, and they bring a flag. And this fella from the government comes in the room, and he says, hold your right hand up, please. That's exactly how you become a citizen. And then they say, confess. I pledge my allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and for all that it stands and I submit myself to all the constitutional requirements and to obey the laws in other words you do the same thing you do when you enter the kingdom of God and when you finish that little confession then they say you are an American the skin don't change eyes don't come straight nose don't come sharp you ain't got blue eyes blown here and white because their citizenship is in the head be ye transformed by what God says the trick that the problem is y'all is y'all claim to be in my kingdom but y'all in religion you need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind and that's why it is so tough to deal with this because nothing is more powerful, write this down, nothing is more powerful than a mental stronghold. Nothing. Matter of fact, the power of satanic control is not really in the spirit world. It's in the mind. Read your Bible again. Paul understood it. Paul says, uh, 
we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wicked spirits will in high places. That's okay, that's fine. Then he says what? Casting down the imagination. Paul shifted to the mind. He says the way the devil really controls is he takes over your mental faculties and gives you certain ways of thinking. So he says, cast down what? Imaginations and then what? Every high thought that exalts itself what? Against what God knows. What does God know? God knows the kingdom. And bring every thought where? Into captivity. Under Christ. In other words, see if what you're thinking is what Christ thought. And what did Christ think? He says, I only think kingdom. Hallelujah. This is powerful, huh? Why are you all so quiet? Help me, man. Tell your neighbor, I am having spasms. Yeah, spiritual spasms. You say, you know why? You know, I, 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 I wish I was your age. All these young people, I, I wish I was young like you all. And hearing this, because I have to unlearn so much junk that most of my time is spent I'm learning. You got a good pastor. I wish I was my pastor. <laughs> I would have been so far ahead in my life. Religion keeps everything from you that God promised you. Because you cannot get things from the kingdom with religion.